Okay. So we did the long tail of cast on. Let's see. Let's pull a little bit out here. We'll do the long tail cast on again to get started on the next stitch. As soon as I can find the right end. There we go. And again, I'm using Cascade 220 Superwash Merino, one of my favorites. Okay, there's our tail. I am using uh, I love square needles. Um, these are US 7 4.5 millimeter needle. As the other video I said, I just out of habit it's helped me get a lot better at uh, estimating how long my tail needs to be by always having them in the same order. Okay, and so again, grab with three fingers, in, lay back, go up and grab. Okay, under the one nearest you, over the one nearest on the forefinger. Lay back. Sheila's snoring in the background. Hearing my dog snore just makes me happy. Okay, so what do we have? We're two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And if you look closely, you can see this yarn starting to get pretty ragged and frayed, so won't be using it too much longer. Okay, have a pretty long tail left over. But anyway, so we're going to do the knit stitch, okay? So, first stitch. We're going to go in at an angle. The yarn's in the back. Have your working yarn in the back. This is the tail. It's a working yarn going to the ball, okay? Wrap it around however is going to best give you the same tension all the time. You're going to hear that word a lot, okay? The thing about tension, I mentioned before, please don't torture your yarn or your fingers, okay? Be gentle. All right? We want love in our stitches. So, now what we're going to do with the right needle is we're going to go in at an angle. Okay, let's see if I can pull this up better at an angle. We're going down here, going up the needle coming out the back. Okay, now if you have your tension with your right hand, now crocheters, this will be easy for you uh, to catch on to. This is called the international um, way of holding, uh, I think some people also call it continental, but anyway, uh, yeah, continental, that's what I was looking for, continental way of holding um, your yarn, your working yarn. Uh, many have seen holding it over here, which is called the English method. Okay, and then you throw it up and around. I did that. That's how I learned to knit, was the uh, English method. That's how I knitted for over, that's how I knit for over 20 years, knitted. Anyway, that's how I knit for over 20 years. I uh, forced myself to try Continental in my 30s and have never looked back. Okay, so going to go up through here. Now, if you, as I said, a crocheter, this would be this would be easy for a crocheter to do because if you go up, a crocheter usually will go underneath the yarn, okay, whenever they're putting it in their hook. As a knitter, you go on top. You're going to go clockwise around the yarn. If you just hold that left hand still, okay, and let your right hand do all of the work, it'll be easier to follow. Use your index finger, hold that yarn on there, and then you're just coming back out. Okay, you're coming out the same way you went in. Now, this is the new stitch. This one still on the needle is the one that we finished working. So we want that stitch to come on off of the left hand needle. 
okay? So what I recommend you do is use your right needle to push it off of the end, okay? I'm going to show you why. If you go in, grab that yarn, hold it, bring it back out. What a lot of people do is, that, right, they stop right here, and they pull everything, and they pull their needles far apart and everything. Don't need to do that. Go up, wrap, hold, come back through. You can let go when you come back through, and then push it off with your right hand needle. And what that does is it, it keeps you, one thing it does is it keeps you from yanking your needles far apart, okay? Um, you want to keep them kind of close. To, you're not going to do any damage. It still sticks and string. Um, but what it can do is if you pull them far apart like this, it's going to tighten up these two stitches and it's going to stretch this out and it's going to look funky and you're, you know, don't want you to get discouraged. So if you go in through from front to back like that, okay, front to back like that, wrap, hold on to it, come back through. And take your index finger off and then use your right needle to push it off the end okay let's do that again okay you're gonna go up through here wrap hold on to it bring it back through let go push okay up through there wrap hold on to it Come back through, let go, push. Okay, it's like you're scraping, scraping something off. Peeling a potato, that's what it's like. Okay, so up, going through the base. Okay, if you look right here, see there's an opening, your stitch is there. If you look at it from this side, okay, the what we're doing we're coming in, this is the front over here. We're coming in this way and going out, boy, that yarn's getting ragged, and then going out that way. See? So you're coming in here, going that way. That's how it looks from there. Wrap, hold, come back through, let go, push. And you wanna keep your stitches not at the very tips, okay but you don't want to hold them way back here okay that's just going to be a lot more work for you than it needs to be and on most needles what you're going to see is you're going to see a pretty distinct area where the actual measurement of the diameter of the needle is okay where it gets its size back here and the tapered end and you're going to see where there's a pretty distinct change if you keep them right about where that change occurs it should be set up pretty good. So go up through, wrap, hold, back through, let go, push. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm holding, until I grab this yarn, I'm holding these right hand stitches in place. Okay. Because as I'm pulling this away, my working yarn's coming out of this side. And so if if I were holding my working yarn too tightly, like most of us do in the beginning, then as I pull this down to go in this stitch, see how it's pulling this stitch? It's about to pull it off. So I'm going to hold that in place, come down, go through the stitch, wrap, let go of this now, grab up here, hold, come back through, let go, push. Okay, through, wrap, hold, back through, let go, push, hold, through, wrap, hold up here, back through, let go, push. Now what I recommend that you do is at the end of this, at the end of each row, bring your yarn, Okay, and you'll see this a lot in directions, forward and backward. Right now, doing the knit stitch, we've had it in the back. Okay, see it's to the back of our work. Bring the yarn forward between your needles. And then we're just going to go in. This is 
going into a stitch this way is called as if to purl. Okay, so you're going to go in this part of the stitch and just slide it off. Now what that does, the first and last stitches in knitting are called the selvage stitches. Okay, and if you knit the first stitch, slip the last one, which means when you turn it around, this will be the knit, the one you just slipped, and this will be the, the slip as if to purl. It's going to give a very nice selvage, very nice, neat selvage edge that later on can be really, really easy, make things like picking up and knitting much easier. Okay, so this is the one, yarn in the back, okay? We're going to knit that first stitch, go through, wrap, grab, hold, back through, finger up, push off. Let's try it again. Through, let go, wrap, grab, back through, let go, push. Okay, hold, through, wrap, hold up here, back through, let go, push. And so right now, if you watch, I'm not doing anything with my left hand. All it's doing, I mean, it's doing something very important, which is keeping this consistent tension on that working yarn. Okay, so let's do it again. Hold, through, wrap, hold up here, back through, let go, push off, then hold again. Bring it down, through, wrap, hold up here, back through, let go, push. Okay? And <clears throat> over time, you'll get your own rhythm about how you do things. Okay? And you'll be able to change steps or modify steps. Whenever you're first starting, I really recommend you follow one method um, early on, I often hear people, well, this feels more natural or that feels more natural. The truth is nothing's going to feel natural unless you already know how to knit. So I say go with the most logical, easiest. If you're a crocheter, there's, there's no question whatsoever. The, uh, continental method is absolutely the way for you to go because you're already accustomed to holding your working yarn in your left hand. A number of the reasons that I started holding in the, the continental method, um, I used to always use straights and I would throw, okay? Well, if I were making something like the, the piece of a sweater, that would get to be quite heavy. And so whenever I would wrap holding like this, um, it's quite difficult. Whenever you hold it in the continental method, there's no time you really need to have the the work supported by one hand, okay, because both hands are always working together. Um, so I don't have the weight on one hand at any single time. Now, if you continue with the knit, yes, Sheila, if you continue with the knit stitch all the time, okay, if you just continue to, to work the knit stitch on both sides of your work, we're almost at the last stitch here, okay? Remember, we're gonna bring the yarn forward go through the front of the stitch, which is called as if to purl, just slip it off without working it, okay? Turn your work around, and whenever you turn it around, your working yarn is already in the back, okay? Then go up, knit, push it off, push it off. Now, you're going to be seeing we're getting these little rows, these, these lines right here, okay? Now, knitting every single row has a name. It's called the garter stitch, okay? Uh, one great thing about the garter stitch, it's very symmetrical, okay? And so the number of rows up tends to be the same as the number of stitches wide, okay? And see, we're already getting a neat, very neat selvage over here. 
where we've been passing that last stitch and then knitting it on as the first stitch on the next side all right now i want to show you something oh look like a bravo hair okay we're going to knit down this row again and pass as if to purl yarn to the front go through the front of the stitch and then just slip it off see it starts making a really neat selvage edge now if we were to do okay if we were to purl these same stitches i want to show you something if we were to purl these and i'm not trying to show you how to do the purl stitch but i do want to show you this okay so we're, this is the purl stitch and i'm just showing this for <clears throat> demonstration right now okay the yarns in the front slip that last stitch okay we're going to turn it around ah look that's probably looking familiar to you knit the first stitch and i'm going to purl again i'm making the ugly sound on the table there we go okay purling across what i want you to see and slip that last stitch well look at that looks just like these bumps down here okay so if we continued to purl every row knit the first one and then purl across it will look just like knitting every row because of purl stitch yarns in front slip the last stitch okay Purling is the back of a knit stitch. See how these two rows are smooth right here? On the back, it's two rows of bumps. Yes, Sheila. <laughs> so you can make garter stitch either by knitting every stitch on every uh, each stitch both sides or purling all the stitches on both sides. One's just the back of the other. Purl is simply the back of the knit stitch. Knit is simply the back of the purl stitch. Okay, and there was something else I was going to cover. Give me just a moment, Sheila. You'll be able to resituate in just a moment. And there's that nice selvage, really nice selvage. Okay, let's do that one more row. Okay, we're going to knit the first stitch, yarns in back, knit the first stitch, come through, push. Sheila, please hold on. Okay, go through, wrap, hold, bring it back through where we went in, push off, hold, through, wrap, hold up here, back through, let go, push off, wrap, hold, back through, push off. Okay, hold down here, up, wrap, hold at the tip, back through, let go, push be very patient with yourself they're going to be uneven you're going to drop them all kinds of fun things just part of the learning process and then slip that last stitch okay all right we're going to stop there for now that is the knit stitch congratulations <laughs>